We're now going to begin with a demonstration of the highlighted functionality included in Civil Designer version 8.3. First off will be Cameron Boyle, who will be covering the roads module. Cameron? Hi everyone, Civil Designer 8.3 has many new functions. I'm excited to be able to show you some of them. I'm going to start off with this acute angled junction design. In Civil Designer 8.2, you had a minor limitation on the acute angle of the intersecting road into the main road. In 8.3, we've crunched the algorithm and you no longer have that limitation. Crossing the road, Using the new roads rehabilitation functionality, I'm going to widen the existing main roads width and I'm going to use that additional width in order to design an off ramp from the main road onto the interchange. I'll then show you how to put in road barriers using our linear road furniture functionality. I'll show you how you go about using the report quantities function that is unique to Civil Designer 8.3. Then further down the highway, using the new profile viewer, I'll insert a road culvert crossing, which I'll insert on the tow point here, check my cover, and then also check that I don't clash with the existing services. Finally, I'll end off with the new point-to-point -point site distance function, where if you are positioned here, are you able to see the other side of the interchange due to the earthworks being in the way? If you're not sure, stay tuned for more. I'm going to use my roads control panel. It's quite easy just to go and right click and select show road. I've also gone and defined my zoom views. In Civil Designer 8.2, you had some minor limitations on the acute angle of a junction design. You no longer have that limitation in 8.3. You still go to Junctions, Add Junction, indicating your intersecting road, indicating your main road. Specify your left curve radius, right curve radius. Did you know that if you've got a center island, you could simply pick it up from CAD? In this case, I don't have an island. Click on OK a couple of times. Selecting your view axis, you can then go and specify what view you would like seen. In Civil Designer 8.2, we showed you that you are able to go and put in road signs and road markings. I've done that beforehand. Using my layer groups, I'm going to go and turn on the road markings for my junction. Reverting back to my top view. I'm not going to use the road rehabilitation function. I'm going to start the road next to the existing main road. And I'm going to design the, the new road as an off ramp onto the interchange. If you have the center line in CAD, you can use the regression function. But I want to go into more detail with my design. So first of all, I'm going to go to File and select a road file. Go and specify which road to use. I've gone and created a template that doesn't have right-hand side information. Because what's going to happen is this new road is going to be next to the existing main road. I choose not to select a design criteria for this road. Starting my road design, I'm then going to insert my first PI. And using my keyboard shortcuts, I'm then going to change my views. When I put in my PIs, I have the option to select Start Stake Line Extraction from CAD. Remember this function when I do the Edit Horizontal Alignment functionality. Insert my next PI.
put in my NPI. So looking at my alignment as it is, I'm going to insert my last PI. I'll put it in as PI2. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want to show you a new function in 8.3. If I go to alignment, horizontal, graphical move along the back tangent. I can then click on PI2 and move the back tangent. You'll see the front tangent stays the same. And then move PI2. I can go and use my toolbar icons. Did you know you can change your PI radius and your properties? Enter. Go to my alignment and check my horizontal alignment. Select extract strings on the bottom. By default, Civil Designer will go and put in your stake line, which currently has no additional information. Do you remember when I put in the first PI, I had the option to extract from CAD? This is the option I have over here. If I do go and select it, it means that Civil Designer will give me the option to extract information from another entity from my start to my PI1. Let's go and close that. Look what happened to my control center. You can see that the stake line has additional information stating that I can work from the start to the PI1 point. Let's take a closer look at that. If you recall, the start of our road was right next to the main road. Here's PI1. So we have a gap between the main road and PI1. We then pick up the stake line or the horizontal alignment from our main road. We do so by selecting this icon, specifying road entities only. Click on the road entity you want to pick up. In this case, I'm clicking on the existing main road. Civil Designer picks up that the road is segment 1, A13. It gives me the options to go select any string associated with that road. I'm going to use the left road edge. I then right click, extract string. Can you see it's highlighted it in red? If I click on the red text, on my plan view it highlights what I've just selected. If I'm happy with it, I can then go and right click and recalculate road. As you can see, the gap's been closed. If we go and view this in a cross section, I could click on the road, right click, road operations, and select cross section. Click the position of the cross section. If I go to my display settings, on the bottom right hand side, you'll see we've now included a strings model option. So you go and specify your color. And on your cross section, you can see we've got the existing main road, as well as the cross section that has been colored according to my road pen settings under my option settings. Pressing page down on my keyboard, I can see that the horizontal alignment is perfectly aligned. However, my vertical alignment needs to be designed. In order to do this, let's go and turn on contours. And in 8.3, you'll see we give you an additional option to display for carriageways only. Looking at the contours, you can see that they aren't aligned just yet. Let's move this out the way. 
and let's look at the vertical alignment. Again, I select my road. Looking at the cross in my plan view, I'd like to keep the main road's vertical alignment until about change 430. So I can then go and right click and insert a PI. Alternatively, I'm going to my spreadsheet and inserting my PI. I mentioned 430. And then I'm putting in a rounded off level of 30 just so that you can see how it changes at a later stage. Look at your current vertical alignment information. And then I'm going to go and switch on Extract from CAD. That is pretty much the same option you had with the horizontal alignment. Look what happens to your control center. There it's picked up from change 0 to change 430. Same thing as before, I go and select the icon, specify my road entities. Civil Designer has picked up my change range. I'm picking up from the road entities. Zoom in to the existing main road, left click, specify what string of the main road I want to work with. right click extract you can see it's red if i click on it it highlights it for me right click and recalculate road if you look at your new contours you can see that they're perfectly aligned going back to the complete the vertical alignment I previously specified a level of 30. You can see it's been updated. If I were to go to the graphical view, Civil Designer indicates the grade from where I extracted. I do have the option then to go and edit the PI point. Due to my cut and fill, I'm going to drop the PI and give it a curve length. Completing the vertical alignment design. Let's close that. take a look at the cross section. So there you can see the horizontal and the vertical alignment has been designed accordingly. And from chain edge for 30, the road starts to split. So it may be a good idea to change your off ramps template at that stage. Turning off my contours. Let's put in a junction onto the interchange. Once again, I go to junctions, add junction, specify which roads I'm working with. Put in my left curve radius, right curve radius. Check that my other perimeters are correct. And then I have the option to save or load for the next time. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want to change the width of my new road. And I want you to see that the junction gets updated. Let's graphically change the width of my new road using the new function in 8.3. 
I now go to Alignment, Edge Levels, Insert Edge Width Point. Civil Designer opens up the Edge Control Panel for me. I can then check what grades I have and what the existing widths look like. Reading my prompt, I indicate the position, enter or left click. You can see a new change has been inserted into the edge control spreadsheet and the new width. Let's put in another one. In a similar manner, I can also go and delete these new points or move them. Looking at my spreadsheet, I'm going to continue with the last width. Let's go and close that. Because my road expert is switched on, Civil Designer will redesign for me. If I go back to the junction design, you can see that the width has been dynamically updated. Using the signage functionality, you are able to go and add your road markings. I've done that beforehand. And then go to my CAD layers and switch them on. Looking at this section of road, I find that I need additional width. I can pick up that width from existing CAD lines. Beforehand, I've drawn in this blue spline. And using that, I'm going back to a function I pointed out earlier, the regression function. But this time, I'm going to extract strings. And then pick up the left edge. And I'm going to specify to use my CAD entities. When we do this, we want to retain the existing crossfall of my new road. Select the line, right click and extract string. And I want to put in some guardrails using the new linear road furniture function. If you go back to signage, You'll see we've now added an additional function there, Add Linear Road Furniture. But before we use it, we need to go to Tools and go and select Linear Road Furniture Editor. Here you would go and create your own furniture. You could then go and save it and load it at a later stage. Let's go and add our own. I'm then going to go and specify where to pick up the drawing entities used for the panel in the post. So I select my browse button and open. If I now go and click on these down arrows, you'll see what options are available to me. Using my mouse wheel, I can see what options are available. Looking at my preview, I can see that my beam rail needs to be made higher. So I'll go and specify an elevation and offset. Let's go and save it. Before I insert it, I need to go and specify where I would like it positioned. You can go and do this via any polyline or spline, or you could use a road display line. Let me show you that. If I go back to my display settings, go and specify road layout. I'm working with Demo Street. And then I'm going to switch on, let's call it a construction line, half a meter to the right of my existing road edge. Click on OK. And there it is. So using that as a reference, I can then go and put in my rail. Changing my view axis so that you can see it better. I then simply go to signage, add linear road furniture. 
if I choose the standard mode, it would then apply the furniture along the full length of my road display line. In this case, I want to use the start and end point where I go and specify where that is. We designed the furniture called demo rail and the distance between my posts will be 1.6. If I choose to use the fine gap point, Civil Designer will measure distances that I go and specify. In this case, I choose not to use it. Click on the green tick, specify which line I'm working with, and then go and specify my start point. As I move my cursor, you can see then that it follows my cursor. Right click and quit. I then go to switch off the red line. And let's go and view this in 3D. Using my defined zoom views, this is where we had the acute angle junction design. You can see the new textures implemented in 8.3. If you want to switch them on, you simply right click. Go to Render Settings and specify Enable Textures. On the left hand side, this is where I went and designed the additional width using the Road Rehabilitation function. Then again, on top of the off ramp, you can see what the new rails look like. Let's take a look at the new report quantities functionality. In Civil Designer 8.2, you went to area volume and you specified the mass hall volume. You can still do that in 8.3. However, in 8.3, you also have the option to view your quantities in a database format. And this is unique to Civil Designer 8.3. If I go to Report Quantities, on the left you'll see all the roads listed in my project. And by default, we give you the option of Combined. And that would be the quantities of all the roads in total. Segment 1 being our main road, has layer works left and right because it's a dual carriageway. If I had components, the quantities are listed in the components tool editor would then be listed over here. Same applies to my curbs and my junctions. If I want an update of my areas, I could simply go and right click, select recalculate. Once you've recalculated, you'll see that I've got a green tick. And on the bottom right hand side of my dialog, I've got a time stamp of when this calculation was done. Once you've got your latest results, you can then right click and write a CSV file. Alternatively, you could go and select the results to output option like you did in 8.2. You can go and customize which roads you would like displayed. Let me remove all of them. And then I'll select the main road and I'll select our demo street. You can see now those are the two roads selected. We also give you the option to go and add a customized report. And on the bottom here, you can go and specify which roads you'd like. Not only that, but you can also go and customize what you would like displayed for a certain road. As an example, if I want just 
my areas and layer works, I would then go and switch off the other categories. And I also have a change range. If you want to work on different segments of your road, you could then select an existing road and we'll give you then the option to go and right click and rename it. Let's go up the highway and using the new profile viewer, I'll insert a road culvert crossing. If you haven't seen the new profile viewer yet, let me show it to you. I'm then go to my terrain mode and I go and specify quick profile viewer. I'm working with the existing ground surface. If I choose to use the strings model, it will then also show me the roads profile. Using my contours as an indication, I'm then put in the start and end point. Right click and finish. As I move my cursor on the profile, you can see the position on your plan view. If you're looking for particular elevations, you can go and click on a point and your elevation is specified. At the bottom, you can go and customize what is displayed. Going back to my roads mode, I go to tools and use the existing services function. I go and specify a start point and an end point. If I select to add the skew section to the road, Civil Designer will automatically snip the culverts at the toe points. The actual cover is continuously calculated. If you were to go and change your height, your cover level would be updated. You have the option of specifying a CAD layer. Let's go and extract the invert levels. We work in with the existing ground surface. And because I want you to be able to see the bottom of the culverts, I'm then going to go and put in a vertical offset of 0 0.15. So my culverts are actually going to be higher than my ground level, knowing that my road is in a full condition. I've still got sufficient cover in this case. If I go to my display settings, I have the option to switch on crossings and specify which crossing you would like. Going to my display settings, I'm going to switch off my other services and I'm only going to activate my culvert. At the bottom, I can go and specify if I want additional information and which settings to use. If you'd like to see if there's any clashes between this new culvert and the existing stormwater line, I simply go to my stormwater module Go to Tools and select Clashes. Clashes between my stormwater and my culvert with one meter clearance in this case. There are no clashes, but if I were to, for instance, make that three meters, click on Check, and there I get an indication of my clashes. I could then go and right click and show clash, or I could go and view it in a long section. Let's go and view this in a 3D format. Using my defined zoom views, there's my start of the culvert. And looking on the other side, moving on to the last function, I'm going to show you the point to point sight distance. If you recall, we wanted to know that if we stop at this traffic light, are we able to see the other side of the interchange given the earthworks in front of us? 
looking in the plan view I go back to my roads mode select alignment point to point site distance go and specify what settings I'd like make a permanent CAD layer of it specify visible pen invisible pen and what line style to use If I stop at the traffic light where my cursor is, I left click. Now, as I'm moving my cursor, you can see if I've got green text with the distance, then I'm able to see the position of my cursor. However, when it turns red, the position of my cursor is intersecting with the ground. Let's try that again. Let's start from this side. let's move it to there. The line is still green, so I'm able to see the position of my cursor. Looking at it in a 3D format. You can see where the red site intersects your ground, and the green site, you can see the position of where my cursor was. Hope you enjoyed watching. Until next time, cheers for now.